Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. First Attention all residents and staff. Under no circumstances are members of different species allowed to exchange rations with each other. Each individual is given a carefully constructed nutrient package specifically tailored to each person's culinary needs and or desires. If you feel unsatisfied with your current dietary allotment, please inform the nearest staff member and schedule a personal hearing so that we may resolve any present and future issues. That was the announcement I had to make yesterday, specifically due to an incident which once again was caused by Hector. In my previous log, I made a passing mention of the human's experience in the diffusal of potentially violent situations, notably those involving the Kotoye. As stated previously, the Kotoye are bipedal carnivores who are feared in the outer edges of the galaxy as the jaws of death. Despite the Galactic Council preaching a message of cooperation between all species, the Kotoye are often looked upon with fear and caution due to their predatory nature as beast hunters and mercenaries. Many believe that the Kotoye are likely to rebel against the Council in the future in an effort to sate their primal instincts. Regardless of what views the galactic community may hold, I myself am not one to discriminate against other species based solely on appearances or public perceptions. My position as commander of the Zarkozian Penitent Legion requires that I am able to identify and draw upon the useful qualities of individuals within my care, paying no mind to what race a person is born to. As someone who holds such a radical opinion, I often experience a sense of aversion from my superiors in the Zarkozian Empire. It is possible that my assignment to this space station is due to an effort to stall my military career, but such speculation solves nothing. Perhaps my way of thinking is what enables Hector to speak so openly in my discussions with him. According to reports from my staff and some passing exchanges from residents in the facility, Hector appears to be somewhat of a private individual. Normally, this would hardly be noteworthy, but in this particular instance, it would be wiser to resolve it immediately. Ordinarily, the Penitent Legion is well supplied with the personal information and private background history of all members. There shouldn't be any sort of risky guesswork or unnecessary gambles when my staff interact with various species, but there are the occasional exceptions that extend beyond our data files. A portion of our residents actually came to us through a primitive, yet unconventional method, stowaways. Honestly, it is tiring to have to deal with stowaways in an age of galactic commerce, and while they are technically criminals according to the Galactic Council, the Penitent Legion does not fall under the Council's authority. Therefore, it is within my executive powers and discretion to informally induct such stowaways as residents within our care facility. Hector is an exceptional case, even as a stowaway. Firstly, there is no reasonable explanation as to how he managed to arrive at our space station facility. From the information provided by the human representative within the Galactic Council, the Zarkozian Empire's jurisdiction is located 1,000 light-years away from Earth, making it nearly impossible for anyone to journey to our space unless they deliberately intended to immigrate here. Secondly, none of the Galactic Council member species have ever visited the human homeworld, according to my messages exchanged with the Zarkozian representative. By this evidence alone, Hector should not have been able to access our facility, much less be able to integrate himself so well within rules that are entirely foreign to his own species. I shall hold an interview with Hector at a later date to figure out the circumstances that brought him into our care. As for the reason I am making today's log, there has been a critical incident that forced my hand in mobilizing all forces within the Penitent Legion to subdue. As with previous incident, this one can be traced back to Hector. It all began with Hector's apparent partnership with the Katoye. Of all the resident species in our care, Hector's relationship with the Katoye is the strongest and almost intimate in a way. The canids and the human respect one another in a sense that one could almost call them companions. 
A week ago, I noticed Hector traveling exclusively within the Kotoye Pack, which is a far cry from his ordinary solitude that most staff and residents tended to observe from the sole human in our facility. Moreover, the Kotoye are known to be extremely picky, with individuals being accepted into their packs. The majority of those who attempted to do so in the past often received severe injuries that required medical care. As I have now learned, the Kotoye generally shun all outsiders except for those who offer mutual benefits. Upon mimicking Hector's problematic actions against the Fuoros and Merulians, which I will have to resolve on a separate occasion, the Kotoye had come to the conclusion that Hector is the key for them to experience even more stimulating cuisine beyond our facility's usual nutrient paste. Hector, in turn, requested a certain beverage from the human representative. Although we have a long list of restrictions on beverages, foods, clothing, and technology from all council species, it does not even begin to address that world filled with dangerous substances that originate entirely from humans. Hence, when the package came to our facility with a charming note from the human representative, I was fully unprepared for the consequences to come. 27, 8, 27, 8. We need assistance in C block. All of the Kotoi residents have undergone some kind of primal transformation. I've never seen anything like this before. The Furos can't even compare to how crazed these Kotoi are. Send back up. We need everyone here to contain the situation. That was the emergency response message that the staff member in charge of the Kotoye quarter left me four hours after Hector's package arrived. The damage report for the incident has already been filed, and aside from a few physical injuries to staff and residents, nothing of note appears to have been damaged. What does appear strange to me is Hector's involvement in the event. He claims that he had pure intentions when allowing the Kotoye to consume the beverages he had requested, but it baffles me as to why humans are so comfortable about drinking such a dangerous substance. His explanation left me with even more questions. Back home, we used to drink Coke all the time. You could even call it our national drink. It's just a taste that every human is familiar, no matter where you are in the world. I just thought I'd bring a little taste of home to the people here. I didn't think they'd get a bad sugar rush like that, though. Kind of reminds me of my own kids, you know. Hector seemed to lack any sense of remorse or guilt about this so-called Coca-Cola beverage, so I filed a formal request with the human representative to provide more context on this mysterious substance. The response was... unsatisfactory. Coca-Cola is a human staple. You can't really call yourself a member of the human race unless you've had a Coke at least once in your life. Everyone drinks it, from kids to adults, and even the elders of our race. Some people might prefer other sodas, but I can say that all of humanity is the most familiar with Coca-Cola. It's one of the few things that Earthlings and Off-Worlders can really bond over. I even keep six-pack in my office just to help me unwind after long meetings. Gotta be careful not to drink too much, because it makes some people a bit hyper afterwards. Still, nothing really beats a cold, refreshing Coke at the end of the day. After analyzing the composition of the beverage using our own technology, my staff have found that there is an extreme amount of S45 and C12, both of which are highly addictive chemicals that are known to cause permanent damage to those exposed to them. Once this log is ended, I shall submit a request to the Galactic Council to ban the distribution of the substance known as Coca-Cola from the entire galactic community based on both Hector's and the representative's views on the beverage, I predict that the humans will lodge a very strong protest against my call for restrictions. However, as a deeply concerned member of this galactic community, I refuse to allow another race to fall victim to yet another human food. This part is about the different species coexisting in the universe. The main character tries to be fair to everyone, but Hector introduces the cool Kotoe to Coca-Cola, the Earth's drink. This doesn't explain the importance of understanding each other. Banning Coca-Cola because it is harmful is an important decision. Overall, 
it's a great story. And what about your opinion? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below and just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the world to me. So thank you and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.